Hello and welcome to Transactions and Error Handling in SQL Server. This is Miriam Antona. I am a software engineer and I will be your instructor for this course. In this course, you will study how to handle errors in SQL Server, which will be covered in Chapters 1 and 2. In Chapter 3, you will learn what transactions are and how to work with them. In the last chapter, Chapter 4, you will understand what concurrency is and how it can affect transactions. We will practice the concepts related to error handling with a dataset based on an electric bike store. It contains information about products, buyers, staff, and orders. Let's start with an example where an error occurs. In the products table, there is a Trek Powerfly 5 2018 bicycle. In this table, there is a constraint which checks that every product name must be unique. So, what happens if I try to insert again a new product with the name Trek Powerfly 5 2018? We get this error. We can handle this kind of error using a try catch construct. If you have experience with other programming languages, this syntax may look familiar to you. With this try-catch structure, you can implement error handling. A try-catch structure is made up of a try block and a catch block. A try block starts with begin try and ends with end try. A catch block starts with begin catch and ends with end catch. You can enclose your statements within the try block. In the catch block, you can place your error handling code. If an error occurs in the try block, then the catch block takes the control. The catch block is only skipped if there is no error in the try block. Let's see some examples. Let's go back to the example where we got an error. Remember, we tried to insert a new bicycle with a name that was already in the product table. Let's enclose this insert statement by a try block. If the insert statement is correct, the selected statement will display the text product inserted correctly. However, if an error occurs, the control will pass to the catch block, printing an error occurred, you are in the catch block. In this case, as there is an error because we are trying to insert a duplicate name, the output will be an error occurred, you are in the catch block. Notice we didn't get the same error message as we did without the try catch construct. Instead, we got the message from the select statement. We can also use the print function instead of the select statement just for printing the text. For the purpose of this course, we will only use the select statement. In this example, we are going to see what happens if we insert one product with a name which doesn't exist in the database. The insert statement is executed correctly and the output is product inserted correctly. We can see that the control doesn't pass to the catch block because there are no errors. A try block or a catch block can nest another try catch construct. In this example, the catch block has another try catch construct to handle errors encountered by the catch code. Let's imagine that there is an error when trying to insert the product. The control passes to the catch block and the insert error statement is executed. Then, if another error occurs, the second catch block will be executed. Now it is time 